your real estate and financial experts, making sure you win in every market. Your financial partners, Don and Gino. Now with you for three and a half years, actually over three and a half years now, uh, sharing with you what you need to know, want to know, and should know about real estate and finance to help guide you to personal and financial wellness. And we have the pleasure of doing that with you every Thursday from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. And we'd love you to join our new Vault Media Studio right here at Cherry Creek Mortgage by going to donandgino.com. Yeah, and in fact, not only do we have the Vault Media Studio, but something I'm super excited about is our Vault Magazine, Don. How about that? It is really, really a great resource. Continuing on the road of personal and financial wellness like Don and I do every single week, every Thursday from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m., we invite you to go to aprgi.com. It's a free subscription to our brand new magazine, a wealth of information uh, from all of our professionals that join us here on the studio. That's right. It's very cool. And it's, what's nice about the magazine, it's not about ads. We're not selling you anything. They won't even see ads in there. It's actually articles that, uh, for education purposes only, to educate you on what you should know. And it's written for you. It's not a big dialogue from an attorney. It's, it's real stuff. Plus, you'll see you know, some personal segments on us. So you get to know the professionals in there. Uh, because if we know if you don't trust us, you won't refer us and utilize us uh, for uh, as your resource. And uh, so go to aprgi.com. So today we have back by popular demand a great friend of mine. I've gone camping with this man because they, they're great friends. And uh, they're just great at what they do. I love, love working with Mr. Paul Dinkle. With the Remax of Valencia, thank you for coming back, my friend. Well, <coughs> thank you for the invite. I always enjoy coming back. All right. So 15 years we've been showing a lot of uh, buyers and sellers how it's done, and they come back for a reason because we build relationships. And you're really good at that. Well, that's what it's about. You know, if they like your service and trust you, they're going to come back. You know, and it's funny we talk about that because, as we mentioned earlier, we're talking about for sale by owners today. And I think that some for sale by owner situations happen because they've had a bad experience with a real estate agent ah, in the past. Good point. And uh, one bad experience shouldn't taint uh, the idea the of industry. the service for everybody. Right. You know, um, so I think that that's something that we'll touch on today is just because you've had a bad experience with a real estate agent doesn't mean that you should have a bad experience with selling with an agent. Because I think it's, uh, from my experience as a lender and as a former real estate agent, when I look from the outside looking in, it's crazy to try to sell your own house. Oh, which you don't know, you don't know. Trust us on that. So Paul Dingle is going to help us with that because the main reason a lot of you could be, what Gino said, you had a bad experience working with a, uh, a real estate agent, not a professional. There's a big difference out there. And two, you think you're saving money. And I, well, the national statistics do not support that, do they, Gino? They don't support that at all, Don. In fact, we'll talk a little bit more about what those numbers look like. But you'd be surprised that you're actually losing money for all the time, stress, and hassle to represent yourself. That's right. So why don't we talk about some of the pitfalls and, and why. And we're not doing this to tell you you have to go work with a real estate agent. This is actually to educate you and protect you. Because there's a lot you don't know about uh, selling the ho your home on your own. And, and it not just the money situation, right, Paul? No, that's true. Uh, what usually happens, people think just all they have to do is put a sign up in their front yard and buyers will come in droves uh, to <laughs> buy their house. But unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Uh, you're really limiting the buyer pool by selling the home by yourself because you just don't have the exposure that you'd have with a real estate agent. That's 100%. You know what you might hear these days is, well, I put it on Craigslist, too. <laughs> yeah, and you Craig's know. Craigslist uh, really isn't all that effective. Uh, I, I will advertise listings on Craigslist, and I, I've never sold anything on Craigslist. Well, I put it on Facebook. Uh, well. Good for you. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've tried that too. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, those those methods don't work. What you want to do is, is you want to really maximize your exposure because if you have very few buyers, you're going to have very few people looking at your home, and, you, and you're going to have very few offers. What you want to do is, is get as many people as possible to look at your home uh, to where you can kind of create a buying frenzy. And uh, if you're lucky, you can actually get an offer, you know, in a bidding war and get an offer over what you've listed it for, which is never going to happen with a for sale by owner. No, you did that for me in two days. Uh, I left for an Easter vacation 
And you sold my home before I came back. Uh, and I told you not to bother to come back, but you did anyway. <laughs> Boy, I wish you would have really pushed stronger on that, Paul. <laughs> now, now, now Gino and the team here at Cherry Creek Mortgage have to deal with me every day. <laughs> now, you put your money where your mouth is, without a doubt, Paul. Okay, so um, exposure, is, and we could talk about what areas you do, for example, that they wouldn't do. But let's talk about some of the, the let's go into the fear factor, because there's some scary, scary reasons that... A lot of for sale by owners do not have a clue what they're stepping into uh, by not having representation. Well, that's very true. Uh, if you're selling by yourself, you know, you're generally going to, you might actually place an ad on Zillow you know, in, a, in the for sale by owner section. And you put your phone, your, your own home phone number there where anybody in the world can contact you. So someone contacts you, you don't know if they are a terrorist or a legitimate buyer. Ooh, so and that's a marketing company, I believe, isn't it? Zillow, uh, yes, yeah. one of the big marketing just companies. Just bought Julia, just the bought other marketing Trulia. company. So they're, yeah. they're a small player now. Yeah. Uh, so what you what you want to do is is you want to have somebody in between screening buyers. You don't want to be doing it yourself. Uh, you want to make have someone find out first of all if they're legitimate, if they're qualified, if they're motivated. Otherwise, you're kind of wasting your time with uh, with someone showing your house. You know, that's something not everybody talks about. But when you're selling your house. One of the stresses is, especially if you have animals, right, which we all know I have crazy animals. We've talked about that Lunatic, before. Lunatic, me yeah. Luna. <laughs> so what do you do? I mean, you got to put your animals away. you got to open the door. you got to come home from work. It's inconvenient. Showing your home is inconvenient, so why not have somebody do it for you? And I think you were alluding to a little bit of the safety of having uh, that filter in between. Yeah, that's that's very important. And also, you don't want to necessarily be giving all your your personal contact information out to the general public. Uh, using an agent, you can protect that information and and, and not share that. And and like Gina was alluding to, is the uh, also the the protection against just anybody walking in your home. No, it's it's scary the stuff you hear these days: home invasion, robberies. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to scare people, but you never know. So that looky-loo might be just casing your home. Yeah, that's possible. <laughs> Going, huh, that's a big screen TV, two big screen TVs, let's see, uh, Xbox, uh, <laughs> yeah. silverware is in the third drawer. <laughs> kind of so, scary, so, so you really don't have any control over who shows up at your front door uh, doing it by yourself. There's, there's not much of a screening process involved. Nobody to be the middleman to kind of screen out uh, the bad players. Oh, and I'm sure everybody loves holding their own open houses, right? Uh, <laughs> that's that's an interesting thing too. You have to be very careful holding an open house because there are people that go around uh, casing houses uh, during open houses, or even, uh, God forbid, stealing things. Uh, y you know, you have to really watch people. You can't just let them go unattended. Yeah, you know, I mean, little things that you don't think about, but. You know, you're running an open house. You don't have a real estate agent representing you. You're doing your FISBO. You have somebody walk in your house, and they slip and fall. Simple slip and fall. Now you've got a lawsuit on your hands. You well, know, you're it, unprotected. There's so much litigation involved in real estate that can be protected by your real estate professional, you know, listing your home and so forth. I mean, we can go on and on, right, Paul, about the, all the scenarios that a real estate professional can protect you from that you don't even think about. No, that's absolutely true. And, you know, going beyond the physical presence of someone, you know, once you get a deal into escrow, you've got the uh, all the disclosures that you have to do. And if that's not done right, you could be in some big trouble. There's a lot of disclosures these days. Isn't uh, <laughs> in California? Know, of all exactly. places? The biggest litigation state yeah, in the every, world. Every day there's a new disclosure added. And if you don't have all the proper disclosures, you're leaving yourself wide open for liability. Uh, the other thing that most people don't realize is agents, we're required to have an errors and omission of policy. So if something is accidentally not disclosed, is missed, uh, you're covered up to a million dollars uh, with that E&O policy. Someone's selling by themselves, they're not going to have the advantage of having that kind of uh, insurance if they make a mistake in not disclosing something properly. And I think no protection at all. Well, there's some things, you know, you, people say, well, I'm going to do a good job of disclosing, but I know I've read some of the disclosures as a former real estate agent. How far is an airport, you know, or how, if there's been any contamination within a certain mileage of your home or how far you are from a military facility. We don't know any of those things when you go to sell your you own home. think about those things, honestly. Yeah, uh, and, and there's actually one of the disclosures that's mandatory. It's a seller, uh, seller and buyer adv advisory. 
it has pro it's seven seven or eight pages of all prior lawsuits that have occurred so they disclose all these different issues so people at least are thinking about them but every day that 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 particular disclosure gets bigger because there's always new things that arise okay so when we come back paul we'll talk about uh what they're really losing let alone the uh protection and the advantages of having a real estate professional but also do you realize by uh, by the national average that by selling your home on your own and not working with a real estate professional that can negotiate and protect you on your behalf you're going to lose money that's right we'll give the proof when we come back to the don and Gino real estate